The Naval Academy Museum presents a history of the Navy in 100 objects. We have spent several episodes discussing the period from the War of 1812 to the Civil War and how many new technologies were put into place during this time. But we have also begun discussing the evolution of personnel processes during this period and how a lot of standardization within the personnel system began to take place. Last episode, we discussed the formal hierarchy among naval members. More specifically, we looked at how standard uniforms and insignia began to develop. This week, we look at the evolution of another process, that of naval discipline. Even today, when a person joins the Navy, or any branch of the armed services, they become subject to a separate judicial code, in addition to the normal laws of the United States. This is called the Uniformed Code of Military Justice. However, this set of regulations, which governs the conduct of all military members, was only signed into law by President Truman in 1950, and it continues to evolve even today. Two organizations that are part of the naval justice system have sparked popular TV shows. NCIS, or the Naval Criminal Investigative Service, is an organization whose roots date all the way back to the 1880s. The organization today is responsible for major criminal investigations, but also for anti-terrorism and counterintelligence operations. Another naval organization turned TV show is the JAG, or Judge Advocate General's Corps. Secretary of the Navy Gideon Wells appointed the first solicitor and naval judge advocate general during the Civil War. And the first uniformed officer to serve the Navy in a legal capacity was actually a Marine. Colonel William Butler Remy convinced Congress in 1880 of the need for uniformed legal personnel. Today, the Judge Advocate General Organization has over 600 active duty lawyers. The organization provides all of the legal and policy advice for the Secretary of the Navy and all forms of legal assistance for sailors. But these developments all began in the Civil War and later. In the early days of the U.S. Navy, the captain of the ship's word was law. This included the power of life and death. One extreme instance where this was invoked was in the Summers Affair of 1842. We discussed this in an earlier episode, and this incident led to the founding of the Naval Academy. In this particular case, the captain of the USS Summers sentenced a midshipman and two sailors to hang for allegedly planning a mutiny. Yet, although this particular case was extreme, discipline, especially in the early years, was nevertheless harsh. In today's all-volunteer Navy, the disciplinary needs are much different. However, even today, there are still some remnants of punishment from the age of sail that remain. Today, we are first joined by Tom Cutler, historian and writer from the Naval Institute, to discuss a little bit more about the evolution of the naval disciplinary process. Then, we go to Dr. Jennifer Bryan of the Special Collections and Archives at the Naval Academy Library for a little bit more about today's object, the punishment log from the USS Columbus, one of the first ships of the line of the United States Navy. Many things have evolved in the Navy over the years, uh, but one of, them, one of the more obvious ones is naval discipline. Um, the reason for this is that, that in, in the old days, a lot of the sailors were, uh, uh, in the sailing Navy were Shanghai, they were brought aboard against their will. They often came there as an as a alternative to prison and that sort of thing. So there needed to be, needed to be some rather uh, uh, ways of controlling uh, this, this element of society. But at the same time, I think uh, some of this was out of proportion. It depended on the commanding officers and how they, they exercised their uh, uh, rather uh, extensive authority. Uh, one of the obvious things that, that kept, captures people's attention is flogging, uh, whipping people with cat and nine tails and so forth. And this could be uh, a very, very brutal thing and often resulted in death as well as just punishment, uh, depending on the, on the circumstances. 
particularly bad in the British Navy, but we, we in the American Navy had some uh, similar problems with, with flogging uh, done to extremes. Over the years, though, things have, have evolved, as a, uh, and the reason is that the sailors have evolved. Today's sailor is, is much different from what uh, uh, they were uh, generally in, in the, the old days. Uh, much more educated, uh, come from a much more disciplined element of society in most cases, and uh, so the, the things have changed. Now, what, one of the major things that, that did change was the Uniform Code of Military Justice was put into effect and this was done for all the armed services. They, we all operate under the same uniform code. Um, this uniformity uh, guarantees that people have equal rights and, and uh, it's done away with things like flogging. Um, we still have uh, the old traditional brig still exists. There are brigs, which are jails, um, that when necessary, uh, these are on shore installations, but even large ships like aircraft carriers can have a brig uh, down uh, somewhere in the depths of the ship where sailors can be uh, placed if necessary. Um, the, uh, one of the punishments that's, that's held over, oddly enough, that is kind of interesting is, is bread and water. Uh, a sailor can actually be put on bread and water, but, uh, and that's all they're given to eat, but it's only for like three days and so forth, and it's not, uh, not nearly as harsh as it may sound. Um, but the Uniform Code of Military Justice has been a great leap forward uh, in standardizing and uh, civilizing uh, naval discipline. We now join Dr. Bryan in the archives of the Naval Academy with our object today. And we're in Special Collections and Archives to look at the punishment log of the USS Columbus, a 74-gun ship of the line in the U.S. Navy. This punishment log dates from 1846 to 1848 and lists the punishments that various members of the crew received for numerous infractions on the voyage. And we have it open to a page that shows that this particular seaman had knocked down the master at arms and he received 12 lashes with the cat of nine tails by special order of Commodore Biddle, who was the commander of the Columbus. Flogging was a standard form of punishment in the U.S. Navy which of course had adopted many of his policies from the British Navy. The Columbus between 1845 and 1848 was on a voyage to China and Japan. And as I said, this records the record of punishments during that voyage. James Biddle uh, exchanged ratified copies of the first American commercial treaty with China and made an unsuccessful attempt to open Japan to American commerce. But of course, the interesting thing about this volume is the record of punishments. The first attempt to abolish flogging in the Navy was proposed in Congress in 1820, but it wasn't until 1850 that flogging was abolished. So this volume dates just two years before the final abolishment of the punishment in the U.S. Navy. And prominent naval officers who were opposed to flogging were Captains Robert Stockton, and also Uriah P. Levy. And Uriah P. Levy has a connection to the Naval Academy in that one of the recent buildings constructed here is the Uriah P. Levy Center and Jewish Chapel. And also, something that many people may not know is that Captain Levy was responsible for saving Monticello. He bought Monticello in 1836. He found the grounds and the house in disrepair, and it was his intention to donate it to the United States. And actually, the house and grounds remained in the Levy family until the late 1800s, early 1900s, when they sold it to the Thomas Jefferson Memorial Foundation. Who can sailor, what? Who shall we do? Who with a drum? Who can sailor?